<laughs> hey, welcome everyone to a cook with me and Jeff. Hey, today hey. and and Karen. There's Karen and uh, Martha over there. Hello, hello. We are going to make carne asada. And first and foremost, why we're doing this the day in advance is because the meat needs to marinate. And just going to show you how he makes his carne asada, which I absolutely love. So, he's starting off with a hunk of meat. <laughs> That's one. Chuck roast. It's a chuck roast. And usually when we make carne asada, my kids come for it because they are love in love with this recipe too. So I'll just hold the camera and shake a little. <laughs> Try not to shake. So I don't need you guys to see him cutting off. He is going to trim off the fat because I hate fat on meat. Wow. Well, that's not. I know you need a little bit of fat, but. And chuck roasts have a lot of fat. That in particular is not very appetizing. No, that looks actually really gross, to be honest with you. I would cut a little more of that cuck off. Huh. There we go. Now we're cooking with Crisco. <laughs> okay. So, you want to cut it like it's stir fry. Or you can cut it into cubes, it doesn't really matter. He likes to cut them in nice strips. Yeah. Strips are good because they cook faster and they cook down to well done really quickly. Yeah. So. And you are cutting with the grain? Um, no, against the grain. Against. He's cutting against the grain. Yep. You can make them as thin or as thick as you like. I usually make them. What would you say that is like quarter? Maybe half. Um, they look pretty thick. Yeah, that's about a quarter inch. About sure quarter is. Inch. Yeah, that's that's quarter inch. All right. Yeah, about a quarter inch thick is usually good. Quarter inch strips. I wouldn't cut them too. Well, you want them a little bit thin because you are putting these in a tortilla. Yeah. So if you got big chunks of it, it's hard to roll up your tortilla. So it's up to you the size you want to make your pieces. He is going to cook all of these individually tomorrow after this roast meat. You can use steak. You can use stew beef. You can use anything as long as you let it marinate. Yeah. overnight so the longer it sits in the marinade the much the better it will be so see that big hunk of fat Jeff's gonna trim that hunk of fat off because that's way too much fat and we don't need all that fat in our diet and Tia can have it no <laughs> Tia can't have that Tia's waiting for stuff to drop <laughs> 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 there's Tia <laughs> So we'll come back when we have the roast all cut up. Stay tuned. This will be a little marinade. Oh, shit. Okay, now you can start. So now, in order to make the marinade, you need olive oil. Extra virgin. Paprika. That's Hungarian paprika. Oregano and pepper. Salt, of course. What vinegar. about lemon juice? Why are you using vinegar? You got a point. You need both. Right. Forgot. He needs lemon juice, guys. I just got to be the one to reminding him. Hey. That's right. You need vinegar. You need lemon and lime. You need cilantro, fresh. And garlic. And probably about five cloves of garlic. And some onion. And red onion. And some yeah, red onion. Some red onion. As for the garlic, so you're going to need, uh, this is a bullet. Um, you can use a food processor, a juicer. We use the bullet. Anything that'll chop it up. So you can Really take, fine. You can just take your whole garlic right in there. And that's it. We're done with that. Don't even have to do anything. Don't have to do anything with anything. Nope. Take your cilantro, throw it in there. Take your cilantro, just throw it in because this will do it for you. If you were going to do it by hand, you would just chop this up very, very finely. Same thing with the garlic. Mince it by hand if that's what you're doing. 
But as for this, I'll just take it. In the cup it will. In the cup it goes. Hey. It's gonna be so good. Sean, you don't know what you're missing. Hey. <laughs> now as for this, I'm gonna take a little bit off. Yeah, because you're gonna be using the onion for the pico de gallo. Yep, and that's coming later. Take off this outer layer. The skin. Yeah. That's about enough. So just like a little. I would chop that in a little bit smaller chunks, hun. Just like a little wedge. Cut it in half. Yeah. There you go. It'll help it speed up the. In there. Look in at it this. Goes. Yay! So the next thing. So that's it for all the chopping ingredients. It's all the chopping ingredients. Now this is going to be liquid, liquid ingredients and the powdered Powder. ingredients. Oh boy, that's starting to make my eyes water. Yeah, that onion is very strong. <laughs> Whew. Right, get that out of wow, here. Jeff is trying. Okay, so got your vinegar. To that, how much you think you're going to add? A cup. A whole cup? Mm hmm Okay. So he's roughly guessing a cup. It kind of looks like that much. So <laughs> where's the measurements? There is measurements on these, isn't there? Yeah, it's on that side. Can you read it? I think. Read here. See where it says max? Yeah. No, it doesn't say. Okay, I well, I think he said about a cup. About a cup. Yeah, so a little more and we'll be fine. Okay. Boss is spoken. Hey. As for these, so this is lemon juice. You go one, two, three, big squirts. Three, Those are big squirts. Three big squirts. So this is lime. And one, two, three. Or if you're using the actual fruit, probably like two limes and one whole lemon. Yeah. Next, we add olive oil. Probably, I think maybe a quarter cup. You don't want too much. This is just to get it to kind of adhere to the meat a bit. That ain't no quarter cup. Keep on going. Keep on going. I'll tell you when that's about a quarter cup. You'll see it floating on the top. Yeah. Yeah, you you don't even have a quarter cup there. Think you're good. Okay. So as you can see, the oil floats on top of the fluid. So that's about how much oil. See it? Olive oil. And so now he's going to be using oregano. oregano. And he measures like me. <laughs> the yeah. palm of your hand. So just palm of your hand. Squish. You don't really need to because that will grind it up anyway. Like that. In it goes. So paprika, this is important. This, yep. You can use paprika, you can use cayenne pepper, you can use pretty much anything that's red. But I like paprika because it's mild. Yep. And you can see he's being very generous with it. Oh yeah, be generous. Don't be shy. Don't be shy. It's going to be good. So lots of paprika. Just saying. If you don't like paprika, then ease back on it. But we love paprika in our house. Or you can you you can like mix. Um, you could put cayenne in it, but I don't want any cayenne. In it. He's not putting any hot ingredients. Well, you can mix like red. because I can't handle hot ingredients. I get an upset stomach from it. Like if you have red jalapenos um, or any kind of pepper that's red, you can put that too. Just put it in there. It's mm -hmm. fine. It works the same way. So now pepper, of course, and salt to taste. That's about the only thing I like, as in pepper. 
Why don't you just yeah, yeah. put a generous amount of salt in it because yeah. that will bring out the liquids. Exactly. The meat. Yeah. This is gonna bring everything out. I'd say that's good. You're gonna be a little salty. It's all right. No, it's not. Yeah. All right. No now, cumin, right? You don't put cumin in it? Yeah, I do. But I don't put much. Forgot about that. Add a little cumin. Most important ingredient. But you don't add, I don't add much. Yeah, because I don't like a lot of cumin. So there you go. Little like a dash. Little dash will do you. <laughs> All right, so he's going to mix this on the bullet. Yep. And this will turn all into a wonderful puree. Way. He wants to puree it. So once it's pureed. Wonderful marinade. Yes, sir, Bob. So turn that upside down. Move this out of the way. Smell it. See what it smells like. It smells like dirty socks. You're good. Ew. <laughs> okay, wait. The people in Smell O Vision want to smell. There you go. Smells like dirty socks. Mmm. Smells yucky. <laughs> <laughs> but marinades never do smell all that fantastic. <coughs> that smells good. So then you have your meat. Yeah, we put the meat in a Ziploc bag. Ziploc bag. And through the process of this marinating, we'll keep flipping the bag and. Tossing the meat around inside of it, we just won't open it. Right, so now you just so, pour it in there and slather it all over the place. Mm -hmm. There we go. It's beautiful. Looking good. You should get some of that air out. I will. Okay. Make sure your double seal is sealed. And then you just want to toss all the meat around. Until it's all <laughs> covered. Sorry. Yes. Yeah, you want to keep, when you're, when you're marinating things overnight, you seriously want to keep turning them over in the fridge and leaving this on a plate uh, in the fridge and just flip it, flip it over so the marinade will run through the meat on both sides like every couple of hours but through the night once it's you know evening time and you're in bed it's just going to sit and marinate all on its own so and that's it that's it for this so we'll be back tomorrow to make the pico de gallo now you wait a day for this to be done yes the longer that marinates the better it will be promise you so see you guys real soon Okay, we're back now and it's morning here and we're making the pico de gallo. So this can sit all day and all the flavors can marry together and it's going to be just so good. Now, most traditional Mexican restaurants or homes, they don't cook the garlic and they don't cook the onion first. I don't like the strong flavor of garlic and the strong flavor onion. So I'm going to chop this and we're going to cook it in this frying pan over here. So let me just get how many cloves. We like this garlic, which is peeled. So good. You don't have to do it. How many cloves? So Jeff's going to tell me how to make this because I have never made the pico de gallo. He's always made it for me. So five or six. Five or six, so we'll go with six. Since we're gonna just cook them a wee bit, you know, not a lot, just enough to get rid of, and how do you chop this? Mince. You mince it. Okay, so we're gonna mince the garlic. We're just gonna t kind of turn it translucent. Look at how crunchy, fresh this garlic is. It's so good. So 
So I'm just gonna quickly mince this garlic up. Like he said, I'm following the chef orders. We're, we're following the chef orders. <laughs> uh, actually, Jeff's teaching me how to cook something. That's awesome. Yes. Isn't that awesome? I am making a video. That's Sean, who lives downstairs. That you hear talking. Is that minced enough for more? That would be probably okay. Oops, we've got some big pieces here. So what are you making? Carne asada. Mexican. See, he's from California, so there's a lot of Mexican food restaurants around, and there's very little where I live, so much. He makes his own. Got taco time. <laughs> yeah, taco time. Okay. That's good. Move that over. Now, are you putting this whole onion in there? No. Half? Probably. Okay. So we'll just do half an onion because this is just a little too much onion for me. And peel this off. Never have it. I'm not a big onion fan, so that's why he has to cook this stuff first. So I'm going to try and cut it tiny, small pieces. Small as you can get it. Yep. As soon as I can put the guts back in it. There we go. And then I'll just chop it this way. Is this size okay? Yep. Tiki, are you coming in the picture? Oh, you just want to go see Sean. That's what he wants. All right, cut it tiny pieces. Tiki, you want some onion? This will kill you, so get away. Unless you really want to die. Looks like you are trying to die every day when you go after Tia. Whoa. <laughs> Good thing I'm not showing my face because I'm a tearing up. Oh, I should have washed it first. That doesn't help. I've tried that. Helps not even. Okay, I'm done. Oh, God, here. Whoa. Whew, that's going to make the sinuses run. Oh, yes, that's it perfect. is. I know it's perfect because I cut it. Okay, so I'm going to move you over here to the stove and to the frying pan here. We don't have it turned on yet. And because this is an IROC frying pan, you cannot cook anything on high on this. So let's just, uh, whoops, put some olive oil, just very little. You don't need a lot. And we'll get this warming up. And then we will add our lovely onions and garlic. Actually, I love the smell of onions and garlic. i just not a big fan of eating raw onions. Never was. Hi. All right, so I need something to stir with. Tiki, what are you doing? These are the two worst ingredients, is garlic and onions. That will kill you instantly. This bird, Peep Peeps, what are you, what are you doing? Hmm? Peep. 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 He thinks he owns this kitchen. <laughs> I just don't want him coming near the stove because this, this pan will be heating up. So I'm just going to move this oil around a little bit. And we're just going to saute these onions and garlic just till they become a little bit translucent. You don't want to brown them. You don't want to overcook them. I just don't want the taste of raw onion and raw garlic. It still gives the pico de gallo an incredible amount of flavor. So, hey. What are you doing, Jeff? 
you want some cilantro. Yeah. You're giving Tia cilantro. Way to go. All right, so I'm just going to, to this pan, add the onions and the garlic. And you can hear them sizzling. And we're making lots because my kids love this. My daughter's at work, the nurse. She's at work right now, so she'll be done by supper time. So again, you just want to carefully watch these that you don't overcook them or brown them. You don't want them brown. You just want, if, if you're like me, you love the flavor. That's once it's married into the, the pico de gallo. You love the flavor, but you just don't like the taste of raw. I don't like the taste. It's just too strong. And Jeff made this once. Was it once or twice? Twice. He made it with raw onions and garlic, and I could not handle the taste of the raw onions and garlic. So this here, we're just going to cook this a little bit, and then we're going to chill it. But I'm going to constantly stir this because I really don't want these to turn brown. I just want them to become a little bit translucent. Ooh, the smell. It smells delicious. I think it would smell even better with a little salt and pepper on it. Put some on this. I really do. And that will also bring some of the liquid out of the onion. Ooh, that smells delicious. There we go. And then we'll give this a little stir. Ooh, looking good. You can see it's already starting to become... I just want to take that hot, that big kick of flavor down a notch. And this is why Jeff started to cook this. And I don't like it in a whole lot of oil because I'm not a huge oil fan and I'm not a huge fan of fried foods. So even though they're so good and so delicious, I can't even stand the house smell of deep fried food. That gags me. It also gags my son. My son hates deep fried food much as I do. The smell in your house. So I avoid it. This is starting to look pretty darn good. The onions are becoming very translucent. A little bit longer. That salt and pepper mm, added a little kick to it. Okay, so I think I think these are good. They're going to cool now in the pan. I'm just going to leave these sit now, turn them off the stove, and we'll continue on over here with the next pile of ingredients. All right. So, yeah, that's good enough. You want to grab yourself a nice big glass bowl, and to this bowl, you want to add Lots of chopped tomato. And how do you chop this? Kind of the same way you did the onion. Okay. So we're going to chop our tomatoes. I kind of don't like this core. I'm going to cut the core off. I don't like that. So we've got how many tomatoes? One, two, three, four, five, six. And I'm just going to core that piece out of them. So let's do the tomatoes. I've cut them in half. And then just cut. I don't like this hard piece. And you kind of don't want it in your um, pico de gallo. Yeah, we got quite a few. So what Jeff and I do is we cut those pieces of tomato up and they go in Miku's dish. Because Miku loves tomatoes and we waste nothing. 
when it comes to fruits and vegetables for him. Some things he likes more than others, like blueberries. He will devour blueberries. And they are so good for him because they're full of an antioxidant. Very good for birds. And good for humans, especially. Do you always cut this core out? Um, not always. But if it looks stemmy like that, yeah. Yeah. It's pretty stemmy. And then we'll chop up these pieces for our baby Miku. And this one here, it's got pretty, I think it's got the whole thing. There we go. And one more. Just wait. Don't don't be rushing. There's another piece for our baby Miku. This is the bestest part of making this because I absolutely love this stuff. So much. So I'm just going to turn it over because it's a lot easier to cut it into pieces. So you want to chop this kind of small, like Jeff said, into like little tiny pieces. Because that's how I kind of remember him doing it. So what I'm going to do is go off camera and chop up all of these tomatoes and get them in this bowl beside me and I'll come back to you so this is how you chop them just very not not big and you know not not minced just small little chunks like that okay and I'll be back okay so we've got all the tomatoes all nicely cut up and chopped up and Where's my red spoon? Anyway, we are going to add to this now some cilantro. And this stuff is uh, very powerful. So I'm going to go easy on it because I'm not a big cilantro fan. But, and I'm plus, I'm going to take some. Did you, do you always peel it off? No, stems everything. Oh, no wonder it's so strong. Well, I'm, I'm being, and I'm getting just leaf. leaf. Well, I know it's edible, but yuck. I just don't like woody stems. It's the only thing I don't like about this is the stems in it. It's too crunchy. So if you don't like a lot of cilantro, you got to have some. Do you put cumin in this? No. I can't remember. No. No, you don't put cumin in there. Thank God. <laughs> I don't feel like smelling rotten socks. <sighs> My house actually smells clean. Because it is clean. That's what we were doing today. <laughs> Over the food? <laughs> That's just really healthy. <laughs> How much did you do you normally put? Well, it's kind of however much you want. Okay, but how much do you normally put when you make it for me? I just grab like a handful. Is that a handful or more? More. Oh, because cool. you're only doing the leaves. Right. Because the stems are kind of woody. You know. And I'm a leafy kind of person. <laughs> You know, I mean, you can use the stems because he does, but they are 
crunchy when you're eating that. The entire plant is edible. Yes, I know. But, you know me and cilantro, the last time you made that when we were in California or in Nevada, you used, he used the whole thing of cilantro. All I could taste was cilantro. You couldn't taste anything but cilantro. Good. It overpowered it. Uh, if you use too much, it will overpower your all your flavors. So remember that. You still get you still taste it when you use just this much. So I'm gonna just do a little bit more because I think that's getting to the point where Looks like enough. Peep peeps. You can have cilantro. You want some? He's running. You want some cilantro? Here you go, Tiki. It's good for you. Good for Miku, too. Actually, all these herbs are very good for the birds as well. Fresh herbs are always good. And that's what happens when we don't use up all the herbs. We just cut them all up and put them in his shop. So it don't go to waste. All right, I think that looks like... That's enough. That's a that's lot? That's enough, yeah. All right. You're going to chop that down, so... Yes. We're going to make this all into <coughs> teeny tiny pieces. Tiki, what are you doing? He's just being real funny. <coughs> I don't think this is going to be as strong without the stems though, Jeff. The stems carry a lot of flavor. Oops. Just about cut my thumb off. I was trying to. The what? Stems are strong, but leaves are good. This is what I do when I make my homemade chicken soup. I take the leaf off the celery and the inside of the celery, <coughs> I use that. Kind of warm in here. Can you open the window? I'm, uh, it's a beautiful day again outside, but there is a, a little bit of a chill to a wind. But I don't want big chunks of cilantro in this. So. Try to get all these leaves chopped. It's looking pretty good. All right, that looks pretty good. To the bowl they go. And now to this bowl, we're going to add these onions and garlic and they have completely cooled. We actually refrigerated them a little bit. Oh, they smell so good. Yeah, so they're still very soft. We didn't overcook them. And that's what you want to avoid, overcooking them. So I'm going to give this all a little stir about. Oh, it smells good already. Oh, yes. Ooh, that smells delicious. Look at that flavor. And this is sitting in the fridge now. This is going to all meld and marry together. The juices are going to go to the bottom and then you're going to stir it all up. And you're going to have flavor throughout. All right, what else do we add to this? How much? Just lemon? Yeah. No lime? No. Well, I mean, you could do lemon or lime or you could do both if you want. Well, let's do a little bit of both. What do you normally do? Uh, both if I have them. Well, we have. So how much? So I would probably say like 
two two squirts for that. You don't want to make it too runny. There you go. And give this a stir. Oh my god, guys, this stuff is so delicious. I can't even tell you how wonderful this stuff is. So, I mean, there's other ways of making pico de gallo. There's other ways of making carne asada, but this is our way. So, when I make recipes, I omit things because there's things I don't care for or Jeff doesn't care for. So, we just omit them and substitute them if we can. So, that's, that's how you do this. So you have to be generous with the salt in this because you need to bring all the fluids out of the tomato. So, and this is sea salt, so it's not overpowering like table salt. Oh, well, it's Himalayan. And it's Himalayan, so it's very mild salt. And I'm going to taste it to see if I need to have more salt. But you can see already some juices. You want to get all those juices out. So everything will be married together. Can we just have the regular pepper? I don't feel like grinding all that. So we're going to just use regular ground pepper. Lots. For a little kick. How's that? Good? All right. Can you give me a spoon so I can have a little taste, see if it's got enough seasoning? Oh, this looks delicious, guys. <clears throat> you can see it's already getting very fluidy, and that is the best. So you're just going to take a taste. Mmm, perfect. Oh, my God. The perfect amount of salt. Oh, my God. And you don't get that big, harsh flavor of the onion and the garlic crunching in your mouth. So, you're going to plastic wrap this, put it in the fridge, and leave it in the fridge now until it's time to cook your meat and get the rest of the dish prepared. So, this is going to go in our fridge and sit there for the whole day. And Jeff will come in and stir it up once in a while. And we'll be back when we start cooking the meat and preparing the carne asada so see you real soon okay we're back to cook time so this is the meat that's been marinating for like 24 hours and it's going to it was chuck's chuck roast and you can see it's very marinated look at it it looks yucky but mm, my god does it smell good let's come up close look so it's been marinating. We've been flipping it constantly. So it's going to be really, really tender. So let me move you over to the stove and I'll be right back. Okay, we're back. And now we're going to show you how to assemble the carne asada. So you've got your meat cooked. You've got your pico de gallo over here. You can see it. you got your pico de gallo. You want some kind of lettuce. We like the spring mix so this is actually a mixture of organic field greens and they are so good there's just so many different things you've got yourself some grated cheese we like to use marble so we have grated cheese and we have our tortilla shells and these are about I think these are 10 inch or 12 inch. Ten, They're 10 inch. So let me move this off to the side and show you how to assemble this. So, if you like sour cream or any kind of those uh, ju uh, condiments, you're welcome to put it on there. We don't like sour cream, so we don't eat it. I don't like it, so I don't eat it. Now, you want to just grab. There we go. I need a pair of tongs. You want to grab your be your greens. You know, I like I like greens. Love these things. They're so crispy and crunchy. 
I like to have a little bit of cheese on mine, not a whole lot. And I like to put some beef on mine, so you just want to kind of scatter your beef around. You know, a little here, a little there. And then you want to layer it with your pico de gallo. And I'm kind of straining it off a bit because I don't want all that juice. And then put your pico de gallo on it. Oh my god, to die for. And that, my friends, you can pile whatever you want on top of this. But this is how we like it. Actually, I'm going to spread it out a little bit. I always make them too big. And I can only eat one of these. And then you just kind, kind of roll it up carefully. carefully. Like so. And you want to give me a knife, Jeff? Oh, never mind. I got the knife right here. And then... You want to cut your deliciousness open and go, ta da! Look at this. This pico de gallo, I'm telling you, makes the, the, the carne asada. Without it, it's just not the same. So if you're not a tomato liker, this is definitely not a dish for you. So anyway, I really and truly hope you enjoyed this video of Jeff teaching us how to make carne asada, his style, and I guess I'll see you guys real soon on the next Cook With Me video. Bye everyone! Bon appetit! Ha! Hey! <laughs>